Should be start. There it goes. Yep. There we go. There we go. We got. Okay. We still have about a minute. So everybody relax. Take a deep breath. Uh, we didn't lose Yusuf, did we? Oh, there he is. Yusuf, you were on the second page. I'm sorry. We got back to you. Okay. Okay. We're going to go live now. We've got about uh, 60 people out there. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to this. Uh, this is our last newbie group meeting for 2025. And uh, okay, I think I, I, I want to thank you for supporting us for the last three years. Klaus and I, Klaus waved everybody. Hey, welcome everyone. Okay, Great Klaus and I, with us today. Yeah, Klaus and I started this group three years ago and it seems like yesterday as a matter of fact. But we thank you all for the support and we uh, encourage you uh, to be with us for the next uh, uh, for the next uh, year in 2025. Uh, what we would like you to do, we're going to uh, we're going to take a couple minutes here to get, let people sign in. What we'd like you to do is uh, in the chat, tell us where you're from and also tell us if you're going to attend the uh, uh, the European uh klaus help me out here is it is it uh Dreamforce? data 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 fam europe data fam europe you see i forgot the name already the data fam europe let us know if you're going to be there next week klaus is going to be there unfortunately i'm not going to be there it's in london next week but just let us know uh we got some people from pittsburgh from south africa good morning philadelphia steve, glad you could make it today steve wexler welcome oh hi steve good to see you today just keep, uh, we're, we're now at about 100 people, about 100 people have signed in. Maddie, let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go through and uh, we have a little housekeeping to do. As you've already figured out, there's a lot of you gonna be out there today. There's probably gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 people out there today. And for that reason, we've disabled your audio and, and video uh, systems, it's just, it would be too much of an overload for, uh, for the system. But we encourage you to ask questions and we want you to ask the questions in the Q&A or you can use the chat to talk to one another. Now we're gonna monitor the chat and we're gonna monitor the Q&A and we're gonna try to keep up with you and answer questions as they come up. Uh, or if you have questions that are specific for one of the presenters, uh, they will answer the question after their presentation, not necessarily during their presentation. Uh, uh, hey, Joe from Warsaw, Indiana. So glad to see you. I'm a, I'm a uh, Purdue graduate, so it's always good to see somebody from Indiana. Now, you can see also that we are recording this event. Now in the chat, we're probably gonna hear four or five times the question's gonna come up. Are you recording the, Are you recording today's event? Yes, we're recording today's event. Virage will have the recording out up on uh, our, uh, our site out there, probably the end of the week, maybe the first of next week, but within a week, the recording will be out there. Maddie, let's go to the, let's go to the next slide, please. Okay. A uh, little bit about the group. We know that some of you haven't been with us before. Okay, this might be your first meeting. Uh, Klaus and I started this group three years ago for you. It's your group. Uh, it's dedicated to uh, people like yourself who have a desire to learn more about Tableau. And maybe you haven't haven't found a group that you're comfortable in. We uh, uh, we try to work with people who have like maybe a year, year and a half experience, that sort of thing. And we fully expect at some point you're going to matriculate or you're going to graduate into another user group we would suggest uh the analytics group or or the tableau public user group as a, a place to go they're very good groups so we don't expect you to stay with us for more than a year or so but uh we're really glad that you are with us we meet every six to eight weeks and if you work out the math on that that's like seven or eight times a year uh this is our eighth meeting of the year it's going to be our last meeting of the year and in uh 20 2025 we're going to uh we're going to start all uh, start all over again now the meetings take two parts one part klaus and i usually do a, a klaus and jim section on how does that work and we take a deep dive into something uh, some features in tableau or tell you how how something works in tableau but today those parts are going to be played by maddie maddie wave to everybody okay and yousef 
And uh, they are like you, they're newbies. And uh, they are part of the uh, part of the newbie group. And we're gonna introduce them here in a second. And then the second part of the meeting, we always have a guest speaker from the community. And today's guest speaker is Hanto. Hanto, wave to everybody so that they can see you. Hanto is in uh, Vancouver, and he happens uh, happens to be one of the senior product managers for Tableau. Manny, if we can go to the next slide. Uh, we have quite a few people on the call today, uh, and and uh, I think we'd like to have uh, the team introduce themselves. Uh, Viraj, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, hi everyone. This is Virad. I am a Tableau user group ambassador. I am from Mumbai, India, and really excited to see the Tableau agent at work and happy to be here. Welcome aboard. Okay, Reyes, I, I see you out there. Uh, can you unmute your mic and, and tell us where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. Hey everyone, I'm Reyes Marietta. I am currently visiting family in Arizona. So I saw some people from Chandler and surprise. Good to see you. I'm in Pace in Arizona today and very excited to learn more about the agents. I use Gen AI in my daily work as a data scientist all the time. Okay. Now, now what you don't know about Reyes is that uh, right now he, he is traveling the country or he's been traveling the country for over a year. He and his wife in a uh, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Let's let's just call it a holiday bus, okay? And uh, they are mobile, and they kind of go where they want and uh, enjoy it and, and uh, work remotely from uh, from that location. Uh, glad you're with us today, Reyes. Uh, Happy to be here. Yeah, Maddie, why don't you introduce yourself, and then we'll let Klaus go. Hi, everyone. I'm Maddie Wild, and I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. I work at a private grant making foundation. Um, so I primarily when I'm using Tableau am working in either large public data sets or um, with our private grantee data. So. OK, and Maddie, how long have you been using Tableau? That's a really good question. Um, I want to say two and a half years i think okay. i'd have to really look okay, but yeah not that long <laughs> okay klaus yeah um hi everyone my name is klaus i'm a tableau visionary from germany i've been using tableau th since 2017 uh, and still learning every day a little bit um so i'm really looking forward to the presentations today um, I work at Muncie University of Applied Sciences, where I also help my students uh, getting started with Tableau and data visualization. Um, so you see, that's my passion, and I'm um, also really um, happy to be part of this group. Okay, very good. And my name is Jim Daner. I live in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, or just outside of Nashville. Uh, I know some of you people who are, uh, are who are in the chat. Uh, I am also one of the Tableau visionaries. I may have uh, met you out on the forum where I answer a lot of questions. I'm an ambassador on the on the forum also, and I'm very glad that you're here with us today. Um, Maddie, let's go to the next slide. Okay, today, after we get done with our little introduction here, uh, we're going to spend uh, about 30 minutes with Maddie and Yusuf, and they're going to they're going to show us their experience using Tableau Agent. And I'm going to let you in on a little uh, let you in on the inside here. Uh, what was it about 10 days ago, maybe? Uh, two weeks ago, Friday, they got introduced to, ta uh, to, to Tableau Agent. They knew nothing about it. And um, uh, I know Britt's on the call someplace. Britt and I uh, introduced them to Tableau Agent and just kind of stood back and let them go to town. And what they're going to do today is they're going to show you what they learned and how it works. And they're going to talk to you about some of their experience doing that. And uh, after that, Hondo uh, from... Uh, Tableau is going to speak to you about how you can go about getting a test copy of uh, of uh, Tableau Agent and how you can go about using that. So uh, it, the whole meeting today is dedicated to uh, to Tableau Agent. And before somebody asks a question, you may have heard people talk about Einstein, Einstein Copilot, Tableau Agent. A lot of name changes. Those are those marketing guys. You know, it's it's the same thing. But uh, we're going to call a Tableau agent today. It's the same thing you might have heard of, heard from from the past. And uh, if you're looking in the chat, Britt, thank you for fessing up that, uh, yes, it's his fault for changing the name. Okay, let's go to the next slide there. 
Okay, just a couple things about what we're, uh, what's ahead. Uh, I've mentioned a couple times that this is the end of our third year. Our next meeting is going to be January 15th in uh, 2025. You can sign up for that meeting right now. If you go to that QR code, uh, you can sign up for the meeting uh, even as uh, even as this meeting is going on. Uh, we're going to talk more about that and who, that, who our special guest is going to be uh, at uh, that point in time. Now, a couple things we'd like you to do. If you have a topic that you'd like us to dive into next year, let us know about it. Tell us in the chat, tell us what you're interested in hearing about, and uh, we'll take a look and see if, we're, uh, if we can work it into the schedule for next year. Now, there's also some, one thing that's very special. We're looking for a couple of additional co-leaders, a couple of people to join the group. Uh, and uh, we're asking you, would you like to be part of the Tableau Newbie User Group uh, leadership team? Uh, what's your superpower? What do you do well? The types of things that we're looking for, you know, if you've got some background in marketing or social media or, you, or you're good at uh, writing ad copy, we'd really like to know about that. Uh, we'd specifically like to add somebody in Europe and maybe somebody else uh, in the in the uh, uh, North America uh, uh, area also. Let us know in the chat. We're also going to give you a chance later on to uh, uh, contact us uh, directly. Maddie, are we ready to go into the next slide? Okay. Just as a preface, and then I'm going to stop talking and the stars of the show are going to take over here. Uh, what is Tableau Agent? Well, you might have heard it called a lot of different things. You've heard it called Einstein. You've heard it called Agent. Uh, it's going to be your assistant to help you learn Tableau quickly. and one of the one of the primary goals of Tableau Agent is to help new users like yourself uh, learn Tableau quickly and show you how you can query a data set or how you can get information out of a data set. And um, the whole goal here is to make it easier uh, easier for you. Maddie, the next one. Okay, and these are two presenters today. Uh, Maddie has introduced herself. Uh, she is one of the newbie co-leads. Uh, she she calls herself uh, a newbie. Uh, she's got about two years of experience, but uh, uh, you're not a daily user of Tableau. Is that correct, Maddie? You can just nod at that point and say, yeah, you don't use it daily, but you use it frequently. I do use it daily, but our use case is really unique and really specific. We're only using okay. public so it's a really different way of using Tableau than everybody else. Okay. Okay. Matt, yeah, Maddie is in, uh, in Indianapolis, and uh, we are just uh, thrilled to have her as part of the team. Yousef uh, is a student ambassador, and you may not know that there are student ambassadors. Uh, Yousef is one of those. He's a junior in data science, uh, data science major in Cairo at Cairo University, and he's joining us today. Now, if you're interested in becoming a student ambassador or you know somebody who would be a student ambassador, keep that in the back of your mind. Next June or July, there will be a general call out for uh, nominations for student ambassador. Yousef is, uh, is currently one of those ambassadors, and I'm hoping that he'll, be, uh, he'll sign up again for next year. Manny, I think we're ready for you to uh, take over. Great. Okay. So today when we are using Tableau Agent, we are going to be working in Tableau Cloud. And Tableau Cloud may not be, um, depending on your specific use case and environment, the platform that you're used to working with Tableau. Maybe you're more used to Tableau Desktop or Tableau Public, um, but the interface is just a little bit different. So I wanted to just do a very quick, how do you connect to data, step one, starting at the bottom um, as our first step. So when you log into Tableau Cloud, so that's where I am, this is the homepage. If I want to use a new data set, um, I have some options. There are data sets within Tableau Cloud that are already published in public, but if you have one that you are working with that's on your local drive, on a shared server, something like that, and you need to put it into the cloud, how would you do that? So a very easy way is to just hit new workbook. It will open up a new workbook and it will prompt you to connect to data. And so you can click on either data that's already shared publicly within the cloud, or you can add a file. So all of the um, data that I'm working with today, it's 
they are files that I have put in to Tableau Cloud. Um, I do want to do a little disclaimer here, just a reminder. Um, these are shared sites, so you just always need to be cognizant when you're working with data of who has access to that data, especially I see that we already had a question about HIPAA data in the um, chat. So just make sure that when you are working in a shared um, situation like this, that you know who has access to that data and that you're being cognizant of that. Um, a little note about this data set before I begin. We have two different data sets. The first one um, is a data set that many people have probably seen before. It's this survey data set that um, is happiness ranks across different countries and it has different like metrics and measures tied to overall happiness and gives countries a happiness score. And the second set of data that I'm gonna be working with is an employee survey. Both of these data sets I've chosen are survey data sets. And I, um, in my daily job, also work with survey sets. I mostly work with things like the American Community Survey, which is an enormous survey set given across the nation, and things like um, the Behavioral Risk Factor Survey, um, which we call the BRFIS. But both of those are national surveys. They're really, really big. Um, and we wanted to do something that's a little bit um, tighter. USEF is actually going to use more of a business use case. So you'll be able to see both things here, um, but just wanted to give that overview before I start. Okay, so now that we have our data all plugged in here, our files connected, um, it's in the cloud, then we can start our work. So I have a fresh workbook here. And if I were to just pop this open, it would look like this. And up on your top bar, you'll see someone who looks oddly like Albert Einstein that we call agent up here. And this is how you kick off your session. So there are several ways you can interact with the agent. You can ask it the question directly, or you can ask for suggestions and it will look at your data set and give you some suggestions. Oh, good. It gave me the one I wanted. They always change. So, you know, this is like, we are really doing this on the fly and Yusuf's laughing because I'm sure this happened to him that when you open different instances, I was like, okay, I'll plan it around this graph. And then that option wouldn't be there. So I was like, all right, rolling the dice. Um, so I'm going to click what's the correlation between social support and happiness score. Okay. And let's just see what the agent gives me. Okay. This is perfect except it's not. This is a perfect learning opportunity, but this is not what we would call a perfect graph. So it says, I've created a scatter plot to show the correlation between social support and happiness score. If I were a business case user and I looked at this, I would not necessarily be able to pull insights from this graph. And if I start to dig in, I can understand why. This is a great place to start, but this is not a great place to end. So I have everything aggregated here. I have social support, which is a metric in my data set, and the happiness score, which again comes from my data set. That's a um, built-in score, but it's only showing me an aggregate of those for the entire data set. And that's not necessarily what I wanna see. So I need to ask myself, what do I wanna see? And ideally I would see these by the individual rows or um, some kind of aggregate within my data set. And I know that what I want to break this down by is country or region. So I have two ways I can do this. I can either do this relying on my existing Tableau knowledge, and I could pull country or region here over to the detail card, and it will then fill this out in the way that I expected and really wanted. Or I can ask the agent to do it. Can you show me this information by country? I also want to give you a caveat that both Jim and I learned and really appreciate is that Tableau agent, if you are not the world's best speller, it can get it uses like a proximity spelling. So if you misspell something, it will fix that for you, which is great because that happens to me all the time. Okay, so it has updated the graph and it's done when I asked it to do. And it went a step further, it put little labels on it, which I didn't ask it to do, but I do appreciate because I had not done that personally. So now we've moved into something that's a little bit more useful and it tells me 
I can I can then go from this place to, to see is correlation between social support and happiness score across my data set looking by country. I have lots of measures. I could have chosen something else, but this is where I wanted to go with this. And I started someplace and I had to ask agent to do a few more things. I could then, if I wanted to um, do a trend line on here, I could use this to see um, the R value and really like use this as the first step in my analysis of this data set. So that's my first data set. I want to pause here because I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to also just talk about what can Tableau agent do and what are some of the things that you still are expected to do as the analyst or the business case user. So Tableau agent, absolutely. Again, I mentioned before a huge thing it can do is spell check for you, which is a hats off to the designers of this, because that would be really hard for me personally, if it did not spell check when I asked it to do things. Um, it can inspire new ideas. The suggestion bar is really helpful if you have a very large data set and you're just not really sure where to start. These are good places to start. Um, it can show you connections that you maybe had not thought, thought of before, like maybe you wouldn't connect social support and happiness um, together. And it can bring a new perspective to data this is especially relevant if you work in the same data set every single day. You may have um, certain pathways or things that you think about in your data, and this can inspire you to see something new. And this can speed up aspects of your work once you get used to it. Also, one of the most powerful things it can do is it forces you to become very knowledgeable about your data. So here I have um, I have the correlation by location and um, I have the social support by happiness score, but I have the sum of social support and the sum of happiness score. I'm not sure if this is the best way to represent this data because I can't be sure unless I go row by row that every single country answered this survey every single year. So actually a better aggregate for this would be median of each of these items. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. Again, you could have changed that in Tableau Agent. It's just faster for me to do it this way. So that's something that you have to be really aware of what's going on in your data and it forces you to do that, which we should be doing anyways. Some things it can't do, everyone's always afraid, AI will take our jobs. It can't take your job. We saw that from the get-go. Um, it required me to be very knowledgeable about my data set and what I wanted. Um, it also cannot replace your colleagues. So you should be having data discourse with your colleagues about what's needed, is this appropriate? And, and it can't replace that human element. It also can't tell the whole story without human intervention because I know what's accurate and I know what I need the data to tell me and it is machine learning. It's generative, it is learning all the time, but it doesn't know our specific use case unless we ask it to do so. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that I'm good on time before we switch, great. So now I'm gonna switch over to my employee survey data set. And I have prepared already a visualization of, um, this is employee survey data, of employees by department based on their job level. It's a bar chart. So this is what I want Tableau agent to come up with. And so we're gonna see if we can get it there. This is like a little test. Is it close? Again, we always need to be making sure that what we're showing is accurate. And so it's a good way to do that check yourself. This is like twice the work. This isn't um, going to be feasible for you in your normal business setting. But as we learn about agent, this is a good test for you to do. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up Einstein and I would like it to give me a graph of employees by department. He's working on it. He's working so hard. Okay, so he did give me a graph of employees by department. That was really helpful. But what, and he did give me a bar chart, which is great because he loves get scatter plots. So this one was a great start. But what I don't have is the detail of employee level. Okay, so I'm gonna get more specific. Can you show the 
employees leveled in the colors. That was a pretty vague question. So let's see what we can, <laughs> let's see what we can do. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to create a really quick dashboard and I'm just going to show mine or chart. Okay, and let's see if these look about the same. Okay, got 55, good, 147. All right, this is looking about the same. The last thing I wanna do, I'm gonna check my axes here. My bar chart was a distinct count of employee IDs. I'm not sure what your business use case is. Maybe you have people who span departments. I don't know. But this one is count of employee IDs. So that's just one thing I would need to change. And I can go back into Einstein here and ask him to do it. Or I can just go up into the top and change my measure to be a distinct count. Let's see where we are. Okay. This is a pretty surface level overview, but I did just want to check my work and make sure everything looks the same. The other thing I could do is I could add a total row to the bottom and then compare those two. Um, but these are two different use cases, both survey data um, of how you can use Tableau Agent to get you kickstarted. But the skills that we always want to be bringing with us to this tool are our data science skills, making sure is this the correct use of the data or the measure that I have in front of me. Um, an example is if you have survey data, sometimes there are subsets of questions or different tracks of questions that can be related measures and they can be reported in two different questions. So you just have to be really aware of the format of your data and make sure that you are it's being represented in an appropriate structure. These are the kind of things that you know as a data owner, the agent doesn't necessarily come in knowing. And also asking yourself, is this the correct aggregate? Making sure along the way that it's correct, like making sure that you change the employee count to count distinct. And also clearly communicating that to any audience or um, you know review groups or anything like that. And then checking that, is this accurate? So that's why I did this whole little activity here. I just wanted to see, is this accurate? And the answer is, yes, it is. I just need to make sure that I'm focused on all these tiny details. Um, but also always being aware, if I'm looking at survey data and race and gender are aggregated, they probably shouldn't be because those people are being double counted. Um, so those are your data science skills you should bring. Analytics, just making sure, is this the most informative way to display or talk about the data? Agent is going to give me a, dis he's going to give me a visualization, but I have to use my professional skills to make sure this is the most informative and helpful way for someone to make a decision based off of this data. Um, when I tried this, chart the first time, agent did not sort them in um, order of largest to smallest department. And I, you know, like said, oh, well, you sort it. I noticed this time when agent did it, it just automatically sorted it. So it is learning things I want. But again, you just have to be paying attention to those things. And the last skill that you have to bring to agent is communication. So always be ensuring that you are being completely transparent when you're using AI, especially generative AI with your coworkers, colleagues, anyone who is looking at this work, being really transparent of this is my work or this is generative AI. And then ensuring that any audience understands aggregates and um, what's being used and what they're being shown. And then also making sure that you are peer reviewing your work and always having those data conversations. Okay, so I'm gonna May stop and Yusef is going to yeah, while we, uh, while we switch over to Yusef, uh, Maddie, that was great. That was great. Uh, I put something in the chat. Maddie had about five days worth of experience when she put this presentation together. So picture yourself as a, as a new user uh, very quickly, uh, uh, getting up to speed on it. And Maddie, I think you had a good time doing it. Yeah, yeah Agent's really fun. So that's something else Agent is. is it's fun. It's fun to play with. Okay. Yusef, I think you have to show your screen and then uh, unmute yourself. And then we'll begin. Okay. 
Now, Yusuf, once again, Yusuf is a student, and he is a junior level. Uh, wow, look at that! Uh, he's a junior level stu student in, uh, you know, in data science uh, in Cairo. That's okay. You were very close, Yusuf. Thanks, Mary. Um, as Mehdi said, we will work with uh, a new different kind of data set. There you go. We can see you now and we're in good shape. Uh, just, okay. Uh, we have Harveen joined the call, so she's here. For this demonstration, we will work with uh, super, super store data set. Uh, if you didn't work with this data set before, it's containing three tables, order one, people, and returns. Okay, let's close this and go to our agent. At the first, uh, let's start by creating our agent. Hello, W agent. Okay, let's start by asking a simple question at the beginning. Um, I want to know which product category has the highest number of returns. So let's ask it. Hopefully it works. Okay, let's see it sub systems. Let's try to add a data range filter. Let's see how it would work. Let's add our filter. We can always change it from here. Yes, it works. Okay, let's create another sheet. Let's see it at this point. It's a great question. What is the regional manager has the highest um, sales performance this quarter? We can add another one. What if I want to ask it about uh, what is the sales performance by region and year? Let's give it a shot. Beer region.
yeah, it worked as expected. Um, can we change its mark? Set to automatic. Oh, let's turn it to line again because it's uh, there is a time. Okay, but what if we want to see sales across different states? Great, but I want to use a field map. Yeah, it worked as expected. Let us get another question. Um, I want to add a filter. Uh, on sales. To be able to do what? To set, for example, the sales. Here. Let's. We can try another chart. Um, we can ask about the profit per subcategory. I don't like this chart. Let's use Gen uh, Power. Okay, we can. I want to see the profit in uh, the size mark. So, can you use profit as? That's great so far, but That's good. If, for this negative uh, profit, I want to make it in red. Uh, we can say if the profit is less than zero. 
mark as red and see you later. Yeah, works. Let's make things more complicated and ask it to analyze repeated purchases or customer retention over time. Okay, I'll ask. I can say analyze. We This or mm -hmm. let's make it in. Monsters. It's kind of complicated analysis, but I do it. Um, okay, let's turn to map and create. Um, we want to create. We want a field map. Um, four states and let's give it um, a filter this time and filter with region and profit region. This is the, do you think this is the only thing that our agent can do? Uh, let's figure out it by asking it to create a calculated field to determine This will create a calculated field to determine if this order is profitable or no. Yeah, it works. Okay, let's now use this calculated field. Um, we can use the one from the previous slide. Uh, which we hey, you you said you just you just yeah. created a calculation. We've gotten a couple of questions. I don't, would you would you open up the uh, data frame, please? Yeah. Okay. Now that calculation should be there. You should be able to see it. Let's see it. Or okay. Yeah, just just do an edit on it. Okay, now that's the calculation that Einstein created. Not only created it, it asked Yusuf, is this right? And he said, yes, it is. And it put it over uh, in the data frame with his other calculation so that he could use it later. Okay. Yeah. We, we were getting questions here in the Q&A. We just wanted to knock one off. Okay, I didn't mean to knock you off stride. 
Okay. We will use it right now. What is the manager? Which regional manager? Uh, is the highest number of profitable orders in order to get it promoted. Okay, let's see. Let's see the suggestions. We can use a category filter job mode. And from here, we can color it, use all. Let's change this filter. Sorry. But the thing, I can't understand this uh, first. Let's uh, ask it to explain it. Yusuf, before, before you do that, you've noticed that Einstein, oh, well, they can't see my, my cursor. You notice that Einstein told you what it did. You'll also notice beneath that, there are two thumbs up, thumbs down buttons. So if, if you're not happy, with the response or you didn't get the response you want, we'd like you to choose yeah. the thumbs down button and tell Einstein what it what it did wrong. And I'm gonna let you in on a secret because I'm that kind of I'm that kind of guy. Those thumbs down and thumbs up go directly to the developers. People like like Hanto who's gonna speak in a couple of minutes, so that they can see your feedback directly, so that he's getting constant feedback on yes, this worked or no, this did not work. It's very helpful to them. I'm sorry, Yusuf, but go ahead. Go ahead with your uh, presentation. This is the last thing. Uh, what if I don't understand the visualization? Uh, even if he gave it to me or uh, I see it, uh, someone else created it for me. Uh, I can ask it. Can you explain this? Yeah, let's give it an informative description. Let's use it with a different. Uh, you can try it here. Can Works great. That's it for uh, this data set. Uh, back to you again, John. Yusuf, that was that was great. Uh, and I would remind you that Yusuf, just like Maddie, had five days of experience when he put when he pulled this uh, presentation together. And uh, I hope uh, he's there someplace. I hope you had a good time doing it, also. Maddie, are you there? Sorry, I think my sound went out very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't hear the first part of that. I only heard Maddie, are you there? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, that, that's fine. We all of a sudden went, we, we, 
for those of you who weren't here before the meeting started, we had a little audio problem and I thought we had a, had a problem again. Okay, hey, you guys were great. Uh, it, I, and I, I know talking to you earlier, you guys had a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun doing this and you learned an awful lot uh, in a hurry. Uh, and I would encourage everybody on the call uh, to do the same, go into it with your mind open and say, hey, how can I, how, how can I use agent what can I learn from it and, uh, and and experience it? Now, to do that, you want to go to the next slide. Okay. To do that, we're going. We have the privilege uh, of having Hondo Ming with us, and Hondo is a senior product manager who's been working on Tableau, Einstein, Agent, whatever term we want to call it, for an, for quite some time. And he's going to tell you how you can start using it. We've seen a number of questions in the chat pertaining to that, or in the chat and in the in the Q and A. So this is the place where uh, Hondo can explain to you how you can go about uh, at least getting a trial version uh, of your very own to uh, to uh, to test out Tableau Agent. I know. Are you ready to go? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. Let me share my screen. Beauty. So uh, again, thank you for letting me speak at this um, Tableau Users Group event. My name is Han Tu Ming. Um, I'm one of the uh, uh, members of the product team that's building um, Tableau Agent, and you can see. Uh, there's actually quite a few more of us um, that uh, is building this product, uh, but you only get me today and you don't uh, get the, the full family. So uh, today we're just going to quickly go over, um, and first of all, great, thank you for actually using Tableau Agent and coming up with some very candid and, and, and good feedback. Um, I'm going to go over the, the vision of Tableau Agent, and with that, I hopefully we'll see that um, that this agent, this version agent is a first step in a kind of a long journey of how we want Tableau agent to change the way people uh, use and understand and see and understand their data. Uh, I'll quickly go over some of the other things you could do with a uh, Tableau agent that we have planned for the future and kind of who Tableau agent is for. And then finally, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about how you can get your hands on um, uh, Tableau agent yourself. So, uh, we know that more and more organizations are expecting their employees to be able to use and make sense of data as part of the work, uh, from all the way from the frontline worker all the way to the CEO. But we know that analytics is still hard. If you think about it, it takes a whole lot of people and a whole lot of different skill sets to collect, extract, transform, visualize, analyze, and then maybe arrive at an insight from a data that you can present, share, and inform a decision. Um, and with you all being here, you're demonstrating that you want to play a part and get proficient with the analytical tools like Tableau that you need for your jobs. Um, and with you being here at this specific tug session, you're demonstrating that you'll see how generative AI can really um, reimagine the way that analysts currently use Tableau. And how generative AI can reduce the time to insights and how individuals who don't necessarily have analysts in their title make sense of data by lowering that learning curve to use Tableau. Um, in, you know, back in 2003, we go back all the way with, uh, when Tableau was created. It created a new market, right? It invented a BI experience that broke down barriers and enabled a whole new population of data analysts to emerge. You know, analytics was no longer just in the realm of the IT world. Uh, and now with the acceleration of AI capabilities over the last two years or so, it's created those conditions for Tableau again to reinvent that BI experience and enable a whole new cohort of people to be more independently successful and to create a new generation of data explorers and data analysts that's powered by AI. So really the vision of Tableau Agent is that we're, we want to use Tableau Agent to revolutionize visual analytics in Tableau. Right, Anal a Tableau Agent will further our mission, our mission hasn't changed, of Tableau by democratizing data exploration and making it easily, easily accessible to everyone respective, irrespective of their proficiency level. Right, um, Tableau Agent is going to evolve from being an assistant to what you've seen, you know, asking it to perform and help with some tasks like calculations and really to become more of an agent. And that's where I think 
um, the, the, the naming change is more than just a marketing, uh, marketing ploy. We are taking you, everyone along to take Tableau Agent from uh, what it was previously called, a co-pilot, something that assists you, to be able to actually complete complex analytical tasks with little to no intervention from the user. Now, that's in the future, and we're hopefully that will you will be along the journey with us to get there. Um, so who can benefit from our vision of Tableau Agent? Well, the oversimplified answer is everyone. Um, for new Tableau users like yourself, agents there to help you find that initial learning curve for Tableau faster. Uh, you may have some broad skills in analytics, but may be new to Tableau. Agents there to get you proficient with Tableau faster. For more seasoned data professionals, agents there to help them move along whenever they get stuck. Yeah, well, you know, while they may look and sound like they know everything, sometimes people like Jim and Klaus need help too. Agent will be able to be there to automate some of the more tedious tasks that, you know, don't draw on their analytics expertise or help, you know, figuring out how to write a, a complex calculation. For knowledge workers, this is you know what I'm most excited about. If you haven't already, you'll soon learn that no matter how well designed your dashboard is and how many iterations you've gone through with your stakeholders, they will always come back with more follow-up questions because dashboards are really more of a, a jumping off point for new questions for people to ask, right? And knowledge workers don't have the skills that you're here to, to develop to go and answer these follow-up questions using that full power of Tableau. We truly believe that we can enable all knowledge workers in the future with Tableau Agent to self-serve 80% or more of their data questions and data exploration needs using Tableau Agent that is trained on inputs from data professionals who know the data like yourself. This leaves you, the data professional, to work on more high value, open-ended and strategic analyses instead of answering ad hoc questions. We also know that Tableau is not a one size fits all tool. Our customers want to leverage these semantic data models uh, and integrate our intelligent agents into their own custom applications. And with a platform play, we're able to do that for them. And finally, for data storytellers, Agent will be there to help generate narratives to make your stories more compelling. So, you know, that's great. I said a lot of words there, but let's make this a little more concrete. These are some of the features that we're planning to release with Tableau Agent in 2025 uh, to help, you know, to really help those target users that we talked that I just talked about earlier. So the first is in context help. So we know that a lot of people are very active on communities, active on knowledge base articles and help articles, but it's pretty disruptive, right? You got a swivel chair between Tableau, Google, ChatGPT, Perplexity, whatever you'd like to use, and to help kind of help you solve the problems. So what if we can take agent? Agent can be trained on the knowledge base articles and the help articles, and, and actually agent can know exactly what you've been talking to uh, agent about, combine that together and provide you a summarized help. Uh, uh, help on how to actually perform a task that you're actually doing. So instead of just generic articles, it can actually include references to your data and tell you, hey, if you want to do this, you need to drag um, uh, revenue to this shelf, right? Much better than going in and trying to read the, the articles and swivel chair back and forth. We also want to use Agent to help onboard new dashboard viewers. Um, for data professionals, uh, it is really best practice, especially when you have a complicated dashboard, to create some tools and documentation that helps your stakeholders effectively onboard and use that dashboard. That's a, a tedious task that can take a lot of time, and it's really not you know, the core value of, of a data analyst. What agent can do is agent's able to analyze that dashboard and really draft a first version of these documentation for the dashboard author to edit and then publish along with their dashboard. And finally, what we're planning to do is that is to get agent to really assess a published dashboard, look at the data that's on there and, and help generate a narrative, a natural language narrative that is going to uh, augment and complement uh, what the visualization shows so that the um, uh, so that the viewer can easily understand the, the implications and the insights that that dashboard represents. So 
those are three things. The, there, we have many more things, but I really don't have time to go through the entire roadmap we have. I think some things that we asked about on the Q&A is yes, we definitely have additional language to be supported because we uh, know our customers are from all around the world. Um, but I think everybody here wants to know is how can I actually go and try out Tableau Agent like Maddie and Yosef does? Well, I'd like to let you know that coming soon, um, you can try Tableau Agent for up to 14 days when you sign up for a Tableau Cloud trial account. Uh, and just as a reminder, what we showed earlier today was just really in Tableau authoring. You can also use Tableau um, Agent in prep to help transform your data uh, and to do ET, lightweight ETL and also a data catalog uh, to be able to create um, you know, data dictionaries, data descriptions, add more metadata to uh, your data sources. So uh, I don't have the exact link on how to get Tableau Agent right now, but what I recommend is uh, keep your eye out on uh, Tableau.com and also on the Tableau social channels, um, i.e. LinkedIn. And when the Tableau Agent trials are available, we will announce that through uh, those channels accordingly. But it will be soon. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank you, everybody, to take your time to listen to me speak today. Um, and yeah. I'll hand it back over to uh, Jim or Madeline. Okay. Oh no, that was uh, that was great. Uh, uh, I hope everybody can appreciate that, uh, uh, that what Hondo showed us is where everything is going. Uh, usually, we see that stuff uh, either Klaus or I would see that stuff when we're covered under NDAs. You know, you, you know, we can't tell anybody or we can't show anybody. But we've been really excited about this for a long time, and now we're beginning to see how it uh, how it works. Uh, additionally, I want to thank Maddie and uh, Yusuf. Yusuf is still uh, still with us. Yeah, I want to thank Maddie and Yusuf uh, for their presentations today. Not only were they outstanding presentations, but you know, over and above that, it's like it was a it was an actual demonstration of how quickly you can get up to a comfort level using uh, uh, using agent and and uh, you know, you think of Yusuf as a uh, uh, junior in college. I wish I'd had those skills when I was a junior in college. I, I can assure you I did not. I can assure you I did not. Um, Maddie, do we have a, a finish a finish off slide or I thought we had like two more to go here that we want to get up. Yeah, okay. maybe I can take this one. Um, and yeah. this uh, slide is taking us to the next year already. Um, so we will meet again in 2025. And we will kickstart the year with a great presentation from Harim Young. Harim is a Tableau Public Ambassador, and she um, she launched a new Tableau project, social project, Visual Climate. Um, and she will talk about when climate change meets Tableau, so the role of data in climate change, uh, making climate data accessible, which is often uh, um, a problem. Um, and she will also bring a challenge for you, for, for our uh, members of the newbie group. Um, so it's something that you can work on. Um, so that is definitely something that you don't want to miss. Um, so we are really hoping to see you back in 2025. Um, we start on January 15th. OK. Uh, I'm sorry, I'd like to cycle back to Hanto for just a second. Uh, there, there was a question I saw in the Q and A about languages and how many languages uh, Tableau Agent will work uh, work with. Uh, could you address that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, in the in Q one of twenty twenty five, we will be formally supporting uh, French, Italian, German, Spanish, and Japanese, and with more languages coming later on in that year. And. And two additional things. My good friend uh, Michael Hester. Michael Michael is a uh, a forums amb ambassador. Also, wanted to know if it can handle complex charts like rounded end charts and the like. Rounded end charts. Let's uh, we'll take that one off. I, I'm not quite sure uh, what you mean by rounded end charts. Um, it's, but, done with, it's, it's, it's done with dual axis, and it uh, it uses different shape types. Right, so we will be introducing more intelligence to be able to handle more chart types and things like that throughout the year. So there'll be incremental and iterative improvements basically every month. Um, okay. So right now I don't think we can do that, but uh, stay tuned. 
Okay, Michael's got <laughs> one more question, and that's about voice re recognition. Is that someplace in the plan that you can talk about, or? Uh, we do not have plans for it, but Michael, if you're passionate about it, and if you're uh, if you're especially an existing <clears throat> Tableau customer, please tell your um, Tableau AE or SE, and they can file a uh, voice of the customer for us. And uh, but this uh, it's the it's not a common one we hear. Okay. Klaus, did you want to uh, did you want to raise a question here? Um, so, yeah, I think this is something that um, that Hantu somehow covered in his presentation. So I, I was yeah. wondering when will Tableau Agent be able to create dashboards? So that uh, I pointed that to the to the Q and A. Yes, we're we're looking at that um, in uh, 2025. I don't have any dates to provide for that. Okay, and we have. We have one more question from my, uh, a friend of, uh, a longtime friend of the Tableau Newbie Group, and that would be Steve Wexler. And Steve, uh, Steve, uh, if you know Steve, Steve is probably the leading force in, in analyzing survey data. And he wants to know, uh, will the agent be available to take wide survey data and restructure it so that it becomes tall data? Mm -hmm. Great question. So, um, like as I mentioned in my last slide, uh, Tableau Agent is available in Tableau Prep. So I know Tableau Prep has on their roadmap to use Agent to perform some of the more common and more high value transformations um, in Prep. I don't have the specifics right now, but Steve, if you want to reach out to me either via Jim, I can put you in contact with some people on that team, and I'm sure they would love to hear uh, some use cases that uh, they can in integrate into a uh, tablet agent in prep. Okay, great. Okay, at the beginning of the meeting, we said there were two things we'd uh, like to hear from you. Uh, one, we, we the uh, newbie group leaders, would like to hear from you about topics that you'd like to have for next year. Oh, I'm, I, I, I got ahead of myself. Uh, Klaus, why don't you go ahead to that, that last slide that you wanted to do? Maddie, go to the yeah. So, so it's, it's basically what what, yeah. what we already started with. So, um, before we look into twenty twenty five and maybe new topics, and it's a good good time to wrap up twenty twenty four. So we started in January um, by by laying out this kind of kind of framework we wanted to follow. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to help you with transitioning from Excel to Tableau and. Uh, we we looked into these different bu buckets. Uh, we started very very basically with data structured. Um, so um, Steve asked for pivoting data. I remember there was a session where we also looked into Tableau Prep and did some some uh, data remodeling, data restructuring. Uh, we looked into different concepts, fundamental concepts like the order of operations, how to create aggregations, calculations in Tableau. Um, and we had lots of also speakers from the community um, sharing uh, great visualizations, visual visualization techniques. Uh, so I'd say we 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 looked into every uh, any of these or every of these uh, six buckets and yeah had little little sessions for you that that hopefully helped you on your on your journey from Excel to Tableau. Uh, one important thing, the QR code. Um, so like uh, Jim mentioned at the beginning, we're in our third year. Um, so we have a couple of um, sessions already recorded. Um, so there's a growing YouTube playlist um, and you can rewatch all the sessions with all the topics. Um, and um, I think this is some, some content for the next weeks until we meet again in January. Yeah. And uh, along with that, we would love to hear uh, from you topics that you'd like us to address in 2025. And if you just drop something in the chat or you can send uh, e uh, any of us a note directly on our, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, newbie group site. And thank you for putting that up there. Uh, the link is now in the, uh, in the chat. Just tell us what you wanna hear and uh, we'll see if we can work that in. Also, we are looking for a couple of additional people. Uh, Caitlin Clark or Caitlin Cox, uh, I saw you uh, raise your hand out there. If you could go out to that uh, uh, that link that uh, Viraj just put in the uh, uh, put in the uh, chat, and let us know how we can get a hold of you. 
you know, let us know what your what your superpower is, and also uh, your email address or how we can get a hold of you. And anybody else who's interested in joining the newbie group team, we'd love to talk to you. And you can go out there also and put uh, put your information in the chat. Thank you for the last three years. Absolutely loved it, uh, Klaus. Anything new? Uh, is it is it too early to uh, for wishing everyone a a good f festival season and Merry It's too early for Merry Christmas, right? It's I, well, it depends. For for probably this group, no. But if but if you're at one of the superstores, no. They've been doing Christmas for a long time. So yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah thank you guys. Forward to a... seeing you. You all are back. You all again next year. Um, have a good time. Yeah, have a safe holiday, and and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in uh, January. Okay, very.